the grass is now very much greener elsewhere because you've poisoned the lawn here. It's brown and it's dead. If these fees stay as they are, I and every other vendor at the farmer's market will no longer be doing business in Loveland. We're leaving. You've chased us out. You've run us out. For the first time in 25 years, I actually hesitated before answering a question in regards to recommending and feeling optimistic about my own community's future. I respect the jobs that each of you hold as I know it can't be easy, but this one, it should be a no-brainer. Look, everyone here is helping you with your decision this evening. As a vendor, we are happy to pay cost-based fees that are reasonable, fair, and based on real costs. I do not understand how the market with its current vendor base, could cost the city $20,000. The Amazing Race, Homecoming Parade, Seth Mitchell Memorial Run to memorialize a fallen war hero, concerts in the park, Love on Art Show, and Love on Farmer's Market are put on by volunteers, volunteer groups, or nonprofit organizations that just cannot afford these fees. They put these events on because they care about the event have a passion to make it successful and offer something to the community in various ways. I have here many emails between the majority of council when Mrs. Cox, Mrs. Sattel, Mrs. Gross, and Mr. Fitzgerald were discussing city business and making decisions for the city that the rest of council were not a part of. In my favorite reply from Mrs. Gross to the group about the future of the farmer's market, quote, the market is never coming back downtown. Guess we'll see how election days grow. End of quote. What does this mean to Loveland? If we continue, we have less events, the, amaz the future of the Amazing Race, Seth Mitchell Run, Homecoming Parade, Farmer's Market, to name a few, are in jeopardy. Why should the market pay a $1,500 application fee, which, the way the ordinance is written, if it's not accepted, is not refundable? And this doesn't even go for the market, people. This goes for every event. So why would anybody want to come to our town uh, I do want to start out and let you know that I'm disappointed we may be losing many of the great events that helped make Loveland such a wonderful place to live and work. They were mentioned, uh, Loveland Amazing Race, uh, Halloween edition of, of the uh, Loveland Amazing Race, Loveland Monopoly, Loveland Homecoming Parade perhaps, the Farmer's Market, Loveland Art Fair, and the Seth Mitchell Race. Uh, that disturbs me. Um, as a business owner, I'd like to, uh, I'd hope the City Council would repeal this exorbitant application fee and come up with a, something a little more reasonable in line with the communities around us. And just real quick, on the Amazing Race, I also represent a nonprofit called In Return. And In Return um, helps traumatic brain injury guys give their, get their life back and give them a chance to make, kind of make a difference and start kind of over again where they maybe had a shortcoming in their life. And it's a great opportunity for them, and the Amazing Race has been wonderful for us. Over the last five years, they've been donated over $80,000 to In Return to give us a chance to do what we do. So thank you very much. And not only that, of our associates of In Return, there's five individuals that live in Loughlin, Ohio, traumatic brain injury guys, that report to our facility in Blue Ash. I came here tonight to urge this body to think long and hard about the consequences of your proposed actions regarding this event fee business. There's a former city manager and a couple of former city council members who can well attest to the folly of imposing these goofy fees out of a desire for self-serving spite, is that we're pretty sensitive to high-handed shenanigans and skullduggery, which apparently this city government has trademarked. Barely four years after driving the race away from Loveland in a tantrum of municipal malfeasance, you're threatening to do it again. This new fee proposal you're considering is plain and simple, ego-driven ego foolishness. What on earth are you people thinking of? I'm here tonight to caution you, to remind you, the race I love, the market, the holiday celebrations, the beautification efforts, were all dreamed up by and belong to the people, the community. 
but I'm pretty sure they'll likely see several of you relieved of your duties in the long run. The people, the community, we did it before. We can damn sure do it again. How are you going to keep and improve the character of Loveland without the farmer's market and the food trucks, musicians, and artists, and the amazing race? Why does the council majority seem to be so out of step with the community that they serve? I don't understand. It was disturbing to be lectured by the mayor and basically to be told, take it or leave it. Honestly, the amendment to the special events ordinance is so exorbitant that it borders on extortion. Last year it cost $200 to participate in our market for our vendors. This year that will be raised to over $1,000 per vendor. If this ordinance is kept, the chance of the amazing charity race being held in Loveland going forward is minuscule. Per our calculation, the new ordinance, our 2017 fees for Loveland alone would be close to $6,600. That amount is a large portion of our 2016 total charity donations. We are blessed and proud to have contributed over half a million dollars to local charities. Which charity would you turn away? Would it be a local Boy Scout troop? Or people with brain injuries? Loveland Youth Baseball? Loveland Elementary? Loveland Presbyterian Church? Loveland Stage Company? St. Columban? Loveland Initiative? Or perhaps it would be a group that provides scholarship for children whose parents have passed away. Or cancer-free kids. The Loveland Food Pantry. Can you make that call? Because we can. Additionally, we received the change to the ordinance by the city, the city of Loveland that would allow city personnel to grant hardships to certain groups. We oppose this part of the amendment due to two reasons. First, it still does not address the ancillary additional fees that would increased cost of police, fire, parks, tents, music, and other entities that would also cause, cause hardships. Secondly, it could give the appearance of favoritism or prejudice to certain groups that did or did not get the hardship reduction in fee. I'm glad to see the hardship fee in there, or hardship situation in there. I think it's a good thing because there are small independent businesses that can take advantage of that. Don't miscount or misconstrue what the negative publicity of this is getting for our community. Believe me, again, I'm going to repeat what the businesses said. There should be a fee somewhere, but what we're asking them to pay is too exorbitant. 